it's heavy, kind of compact, rather expensive, and extremely jank. This is my XT3 Cine rig, or as I like to call it, the XT Cine. And to set it up, I'm gonna need a lot. And I mean a lot of Allen keys. I dug up every Allen key I have in my house for this video. Okay, but seriously, let's talk about my XT3 Cine rig right here. Okay, so let's start off with this video. Now, if you have any questions you want to ask me about literally anything from PCs to camera stuff, uh, follow, my, follow me on Instagram, message me there, or join my Discord. Let's talk about the XT3 Cinema Rig though, ignoring this bit of tape we have here first. Um, why did I choose the XT3 first and foremost? I absolutely love the XT3 because it's like a thousand hundred dollars sink. Uh, Singapore dollar second hand, so about 900 USD second hand, and it, it can shoot video as good as good as like a Canon C200. It's got 4K 60, it can shoot 4K 60p 10 bit 420 internal, which is excellent. Uh, and if you want to shoot all intra, you gotta shoot uh, 4K 20 for up to 4K 30p. Um, you can shoot 4K 60 bit, 10 bit, 420 internal. If you shoot externally, you can shoot up to 422 10 bit uh, externally. And it's got a bunch of other things that's got that's going for it. For one, it uses cheap SD card media. It doesn't use C fast cards that are crazy expensive. Uh, with a lens adapter, it can actually get pretty good autofocus even with EF lenses. I'll talk more about that adapter in a bit. It's got a pretty nice screen, got a nice viewfinder. The ergonomics are excellent and it's a very good steals camera as well as a video camera. So in terms of pure functionality, it's actually pretty beast of a camera and in terms of autofocus as well, this one's a pretty good camera. I'll talk more about this in depth in the future as to why the XT3 is just an insane camera to get because I'm, I love this camera more and more the more and more I use it. We're talking about the Cine rig today, so let's focus on that. So let's start off with, let's start off with the, 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 the thing closest to the camera, and that is the battery grip. Now the battery grip I have on here is the, uh, is the Fujifilm's own battery grip. Now I would actually exactly recommend getting Fujifilm's battery grip for this, because while it is a pretty good battery grip, there is a battery grip out there by a brand called Mica, I think, that has a built-in kind of remote transmitter stuff and it's super convenient for having a remote shutter and stuff. one's also cheaper than the Fujifilm grip so do check that one out but this one came with the camera when I bought it second hand by the way I bought pretty much everything in this rig second hand because I hate e-waste and also I'm broke the battery grip is second hand so it just came with the camera so uh, that's that but yeah, it's pretty good. It allows me to power the camera off DC 9 volt. Yeah, DC 9 volts. So I can just plug it in and not have to worry about battery power. I can also charge the batteries that way as well. Uh, and it also allows me, most importantly, of course, it allows me to use two batteries at once instead of one battery, uh, which is very important because the XT3's batteries are very, very tiny. So if I only have one of them in there, I'll be swapping them out the whole day. And if so, if I wish to shoot video, I don't really want that. I just want to have my batteries in there at one time and it also makes the camera bigger heavier so less shake and all that stuff because this camera does not have in-body image stabilization and that's kind of a problem if you're shooting handheld like i am a lot of the time now around surrounding this camera to add more weight and also to mount stuff to it we have a nice little cage right here so this cage is from small rig like every rigging part ever. <laughs> and the, this cage is from Small Rig because only Small Rig makes a cage for the XT3 with battery grip. Unfortunate because I like to consider other brands as well. But it's a it's a pretty good cage. I think I bought the last one available on Amazon. I don't know if they restocked it. They might not restock it because it's an old camera. It's not that popular to buy a cage for it. But you know, it's a nice, pretty good cage. I can mount a lot of things to it. Uh, although with the battery grip, it's hard if I wanted to put rails on it for, you know, form focus. So I'll probably never do that. But yeah, I, the cage is pretty good. It's well built, protects the camera a little bit, allows me to mount stuff to it. And it's about 100 USD. And I bought the last one on Amazon, as far as I can tell. So that's that. And then we have the top handle right here. And this one's just a simple small rig top handle. I just bought the cheapest one that didn't have rubber on it. Now this is quite an interesting observation I've made uh, over the years. Anything with rubber on it that you are planning to use a lot in Singapore, don't get it. Get the version without rubber on it. Rubber might give you better grip on a small rig handle, but if you're shooting in a hot, humid, 
country environment like in Singapore or I don't know anywhere near the equator that rubber is going to deteriorate it's going to get sticky it's going to get disgusting so I generally would recommend not getting rubber on your accessories and everything really um, if you're in Singapore because chances are you'll be shooting outdoors a bunch and that sweat from your hands and that the humidity is going to wear away that rubber and it's going to be sticky and disgusting so that's that so on the bottom of this rig we have this right here this is a Manfrotto base plate, I think it's the 501 base plate or something like that. But basically it allows me to quick, you know, quickly swap between my tripod, my monopod, uh, my overhead rig. Not really, but my, I can swap between different rigs, different setups with this plate. And it, it's very convenient, so it's, it's an excellent little thing. I pretty much leave it always on here because if I don't have this plate on here, this camera cannot actually stand on its own when I place it down. So this plate actually helps it, you know, have balance and have the ability to stand on its own so it is why I always have it on even if I'm not planning to use my tripod or monopod and uh, there's that so right in front here we have my Fringer lens adapter now this is a lens adapter from a brand called Fringer and because they're not like Sigma who have a vested interest in selling you more Sigma lenses I like the MC11 adapter for Sony lenses to for EF lenses to Sony lenses, this doesn't just work with one brand of lenses, this works with a lot of different Canon lenses in adapting it to Fuji mount. So unlike the MC11 adapter for E mount, this doesn't just work with Sigma, which is important because I have a lot of Canon lenses that I like to use. And I think if they made an adapter for e, EF to E mount, the fringer mount would sell like the fringer adapters would sell like crazy. The build quality on the the build quality on this is excellent uh, it's got a little aperture ring for me to change my aperture um, it, the whole thing it, it's built well it's a metal beast and autofocus works perfectly with this adapter with pretty much all the Canon lenses I've used on it unlike the MC11 which only works with Sigma lenses god damn it Sigma but it's okay and as you can tell uh, I've got a Sigma lens on here. This is the 18 to 35 f1.8. This is the main lens I use for YouTube because it's so sharp. Uh, it's so sharp, and at the same time, it's f1.8, so it's fast. You get that blurry background that we all like. And I've got an ND filter on here, so I can shoot outdoors and stuff. Um, it's a cheap ND filter, but it's pretty okay in terms of sharpness, so long as I don't turn it all the way. Uh, I love this 1835 f1.8. It's a lens that I'm likely to never sell unless they come out with one that's maybe stabilized, a Mark II version for E mount or something, which I'm sure will happen one day. But right now, they're still selling a lot of these lenses that there's no point for them to make a new one. But 1835 f1.8, lovely little beast of a lens. If you shoot a Super 35 camera and there's a way to <laughs> adapt EF mount, uh, to it quite effectively with an MC11 or something. This is kind of a lens that everyone recommends for a good reason. Sharp, beautiful. So it's the main lens I got on here, but I got other lenses. I've got my Camlan 50mm uh, f1.1 that I've reviewed in the past. I've got a Canon Nifty 50, which I recently unboxed on camera. This is the Nifty 50, got an ND filter on there. The Power to Grade kit, which I'm gonna make a video about, and we've got this Canon 10 to 18 f 4.5 to 5.6. is a super cheap wide-angle lens, but it allows me to get a very YouTube style view. And if I was shooting video of like a building, I want wide angle, and this gives me that. That's okay, so that's the lenses. Let's talk about the right handle right here, because this is uh, I think the part of this build that is probably the most interesting out of um, everything. As you can see, there's a jumble of cables there and it's kind of a mess, but it actually is super functional. Uh, let me explain. This right here is a simple, just a remote, a shutter remote. So one thing I found was that I like shooting with my side handle on the right. But the problem is that when you put it like this, every time you want to start recording, you have to reach over and press this button like this which is a complete hassle, you know, and it shakes the camera because you're changing your grip. So I, I was thinking, how am, I gonna, how am I gonna move the shutter over here? Then I realized, why don't I just use a standard remote? And turns out Fujifilm has a remote port here that supports, uh, you know, that's a box standard remote, 2.5 inch remote port. Uh, you don't have to buy that fancy Fujifilm USB based digital remote. You just have to buy this simple one that works for Canons and Panasonics and whatnot. So 
uh, this beautiful remote right here, I just plug it in and I tape it onto that side handle. And now I have the button over here so I can autofocus and I can start recording just with my thumb, which is gonna mean more convenience with shooting. It looks kind of jank, it looks very jank, uh, but it works brilliantly as a solution. So there's really <laughs> nothing wrong with it at all. And if you're wondering what side handle this is, it's a small rig side handle, it's just a simple wooden handle. I got it for a good cheap price, second hand. It screws in here with some nice screws perfectly and it gets the job done. And it allows me to get a better grip on this camera. And one thing I've noted is that because you have, because you're not directly connected to the camera body, any sort of shake you have on your right hand, you can get less shake in your video with a side handle, so you get more stable footage. Okay, so that's that. Let's talk about the last thing, last piece of this puzzle, which is not in camera, not in frame right now, and that is the monitor. I've got a cheap Fuel World 1080 PS7 monitor. Now, the main reason that I just got cheap, crappy monitor is because I'm broke, and I just needed a big monitor for pulling manual focus accurately. And that monitor has focus peaking, false color histograms, it has most of the things I need. And while it isn't super color accurate, so, I can, so long as I can get my exposure and my focus just right, it's fine. I shoot it F long anyway, so I don't really need color accuracy. I just need to be able to set it just right and all that. I plug it into my camera with a micro HDMI cable. Now, I'm personally not a fan that this camera has micro HDMI instead of even just mini HDMI. It is technically a photography focused camera even though Fuji should definitely focus more on the photo side, the video side of things as well because they have a lot of potential. Uh, so yeah, that's it for the XT Cine, the XG3 Cine rig. Uh, I hope you guys had, uh, you know, had fun because I know people watch gear videos just for fun. I watch gear videos just for fun. And uh, if you learned anything or you want any sort of the parts list and stuff, just comment down below or ask me on Discord, Instagram, all that good stuff. That would be greatly appreciated. If you did enjoy the video, obviously like and subscribe. You know the standard YouTube drill. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm gonna hit up. See you soon.